Hello and welcome to this second um, tutorial video on UMA 2.0 and Blender 2.76b. We're going to be looking at um, Blender 2.76b itself here, what comprises a model and the UMA Blender.blend. And this time rather than too much talking, we're going to jump straight into the thing so you can see what we're working with. This entire video is basically focused on the first step of our workflow, open UMA Blender.blend. So if you've already looked for it and you know everything about it, by all means use this as a reference video or even skip it. Um, if you aren't confident though or you just want to know all you can know about it from my perspective, um, well, let's have some fun with this. Very quickly, I'm just going to go over some aims that we're looking at here. The main thing is we're going to recap some essentials of Blender uh, as we go and I'm just going to quickly bring up some useful commands to us. Um, we're going to also identify and explain the components of uh, UMA Blender and we're going to conceptualize a basic clothing design. But first of all, obviously we need to understand um, in Blender what our UMA model is made up of in there. Now you notice there are various things called rigs. These rigs are the skeleton which uh, models are linked to and it's used to define movement, size, shaping, everything else. If a rig or the skeleton is distorted, the model that is attached to it is distorted as well. Specifically there is this thing called weighting, so different parts of the rig will be attached to different vertices. Now vertices are like the dots in a dot to dot, which you might have done as a kid, where you started from one, then went to two and joined up all the dots. Uh, they're the points which we connect to make our model. And from those points, like with a dot to dot, it all comes together to make what's called a mesh, or how our vertices are linked up to make our model. Now, with that mesh, uh, there is a small issue. We have these things called normals, and for the purposes of everything we're going to be creating, every face is one-sided, and we will only ever be rendering one side of each face, so to speak. So we need to make sure that our mesh knows, or our normals know, and our file knows, which way is facing outward. So we're going to do something called recalculating normals, which fortunately is only done with a keystroke. So that's absolutely lovely. And that tells us which way, as I said, faces outside, but it doesn't tell these, any software, in fact, uh, how to apply a texture. And for that, what we're going to be doing is creating a UV map later on in a future video. Uh, for now, I'm just going to leave the explanation as it's a 2D texture. Um, there's a whole thing about spheres here. It's a basic spherical 2D texture, which is projected onto a 3D model. Um, if you want to look it up at any point, by all means do so. It's a really uh, interesting concept. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to flash up a few shortcuts. If you want to note them down or anything else, then do feel free to do so. Pause it, take screenshots, come back to it as and when you need it. Um, basically take these down. The, we will be using the majority of these shortcuts at some point. Some are specific to modes. In Blender we have different modes. We have uh, the main modes we'll be using object mode which is selecting whole meshes at a time and edit mode which is picking apart individual pieces of a mesh. So picking a vertex or a face or even an edge which is the side of any particular face. Now the fun bit is about to begin actually. I'm trying to go through this as quickly as possible here. So we're going to look at UMA Blender.blend now. Now before we do anything else, obviously download the UMA content creation package and I would make a copy of the extracted UMA Blender.blend somewhere new. I have it in my project directory. Um, in my case I have UMA underscore VD underscore assets dot blend and I throw all of my models into that one file. Again for all kinds of reasons probably not the best idea but it's very handy when you've got all of your clothing in one file that's the joy of using blender for this so time to get to it so before anything else we're just going to quickly look in the uma content pack and we're going to find the file we need to get out of it so open your content pack once you've extracted it and all we care about is this blend folder open that uma blender and as I mentioned, copy it somewhere safe so that you're not overwriting the original and you're not having to re-extract an entire archive again or find the archive again. Um, 
and as I said the advantage is if you extract it to somewhere below your assets folder unity won't keep loading it you can add all your assets to it if you want go nuts and we're gonna open it and very quickly have an examination of what's in here so first things first we have a human female hooray we do not have a human male boo don't worry they are all here we're gonna make this interface a bit more user-friendly first so you can have a quick loop around with the middle mouse button press down uh, move the position of the camera with shift and the middle mouse button but if you want more room come to the top right of the user perspective click drag it across arrow appears let go boom large user perspective we don't actually want it that big though we do just want to have our tools to hand just because so over here is a little addition sign click that and now we have a little toolbox bear in mind if you do have unity tools installed for blender you don't actually use it at all for this we won't be touching it so here we have our human female but if we have a look at our hierarchy over in the top right we're going to expand where it says scene so click the little plus you'll see there's more than uh, human female uma if you left click it where it says uma human female you can see it's selected in object mode but if we select uh, the Uma female rig, there's no female rig, except there is. If you have a look down towards the bottom, you'll see there's a series of what are called layers down here. Not very obvious. If you click the one that's now highlighted in orange from where I've selected Uma female rig, you'll see that's where the rig is. If we want to find the Uma human male, we can click the male. And again, little orange dot, click that, and there he is. In fact, these four over here contain our main components. So we have the human male, human female, human female rig, human male rig. Every last single one is there. And in order to set up our workspace, so it's ideal for us, what we're actually going to do is we're going to click on the rig for the human male first and then below it shift click and you can see we have both scenes or both layers should I say loaded into our scene we're gonna work exclusively with a human male for now what we're gonna do to make our life easier when going through the hierarchy as well is where it says all scenes up here we're just gonna click that we're going to select visible layers so essentially the only thing that appears in our hierarchy is any layer we have active at the time. So if I now click the human female, you'll see we only have the human female and the human female eyelash. And again, female rig, etc. So we'll go back selecting the human male and the human male rig. Now, this is actually pretty much all we need to work with. In fact, it is all we need to touch in Blender for now. If you want very quickly, expand uma human male and if you go to uma human male you remember i mentioned the seven actual slots in use earlier and you'll find them here the face the inner mouth the eyes the torso the legs the hands the feet all of them are there and although it may seem weird what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate part of our man that duplicate will already have these links to these components and we are going to completely unlink all of it that way then we can have a model that covers more than one existing slot um, basically these are going to be the bane of your life the first couple of times because you will completely forget to unlink them as I did and then go oh yeah that's what I missed but for now have a play around have a fiddle um, you have object mode here and obviously you can select edit mode and it will bring up something much different. The default in Uma Blender is face edit mode. Now down here you've got the three different types of edit modes, vertex, edge and face. Face allows you to move entire faces and you'll see it automatically mirrors here. Edge allows you to select an edge and expand it again automatically mirrors and the same with the vertex unless I go a little bit rogue um, 
that's not really rogue that's more strange 1980s road warrior um but as you can see you can really fiddle around but bear in mind at the moment any edit you make is actually being made to the core uma and that's not what we want so if you are fiddling about with this make sure you press ctrl and z to undo and get back to scratch so very quickly just one last little thing you'll notice there are these red lines these red lines have very little to do with um, the slots they're actually for UVs if you remember I said UVs rely on spheres in order to lay onto our model those are the seams for the UV so we're not going to be doing anything with that whatsoever in fact uh, at this point in time um, it's not ideal that we should really be encouraging people to generate tons of new UVs but we won't be doing it with seams we'll just be doing it the lazy way that Blender offers us so again have fun, look around, enjoy, fiddle about with a few commands. And then when you're ready, after you've done that, um, feel free to join me in the next video. Just one final thing, if you do open vertex groups, don't panic, we aren't touching them, ever. So, hope you enjoyed that, and see you in the next video where we actually create some content, which hopefully will look something like this trench coat.